So uh, I think we are good to start and let me start by wishing good morning to all our participants and I want to thank you for the time you've taken today to join us in this webinar. I hope it's going to be really, really interesting for you and it will be a good learning exercise for all of us, including for me as well. So let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Sharad Agarwal. I represent Cyber Gear. And uh, I love telling this story to everybody I meet because we started in February of 1996 and went to the economic department to register cyber gear as an internet services company. And Dubai economic department being so efficient issued a trade license within two working days, but there was one mistake in it. The nature of business said automobiles because of gear as part of my name. And this is a true story, I didn't make it up. I told the dude at the counter, you know, I'm trying to do internet and you were saying automobile. And he said, shoe uh, other internet, what is internet? And lazem automobile. Uh, to cut a long story short, we established ourselves as the first internet services company in February of 1996. Our first customer was Etisalat and we built their website. And those days were dial-up modem days, if you remember. We used to have pages, we used to have fax machines, and how everything has changed over the years. Fast forward, and now we are in 2020. So a little bit about Cybergear. The services that we offer today are in the web, mobile, digital, social, and off late, we've got into AI, big data, cybersecurity, and omnichannel. So host of services, all under one roof. A little bit about today's participants mix. We've had participants register from seven countries and three continents. So we are going to have uh, people from very diverse backgrounds representing some of the industries like finance, publishing, technology, hospitality, FMB, sports, beauty care, electronics. And all sides of companies are represented. We have a few SMEs today and we have a few multinationals. So <clears throat> getting down to our topic for today, which is growing online during a global pandemic, even if everyone else seems to be failing. I think this topic is very relevant in today's post-COVID economy, where you will agree everything has changed on its head within a matter of few months. One good thing that came out of COVID in terms of technology is that the digital transformation process has accelerated. People who were planning to get into digital transformation as part of their two or three years plan are now looking at it right away. Just the other day I had a call from a random company in Dubai and he called me and said, boss, I want digital. So I said, sure, tell me more. He says, I want to be like Amazon. I said, okay. Once I engaged with him, all he wanted to do was sell online. He was in the perfumes business, by the way. And he wanted to send, set up a shopping cart with a payment gateway. But his description was, I want digital. I want to be like Amazon. And I think this tells a bigger story, which is that every single person in business, whether it's a Mayan Pasha, whether it is an SME, whether it is a multinational or government entity, all of them have realized that now is the time to make every touch point digital, contactless, use AI, use technology. And so today's topic is absolutely relevant in terms of explaining the importance of digital marketing in today's environment. There is a misconception that it is expensive to run digital campaigns. You'll be surprised and I'm not going to take away anything from Andre's presentation. He's going to show you why now is the best time 
to be advertising online and trying to get maximum bang for your buck. So let's uh, dive into the topic for today's webinar. And I'd like to introduce Andre Cruz, who's the co-founder and head of performance marketing at Digitally. And I have to tell you the story. I had never met Digitally until three weeks back. And I met them digitally online. Never met the people physically so far. And uh, thanks to the internet, we struck a collaboration. We had 82 people register for today's webinar. And Andre Cruz is coming in all the way from Portugal to enlighten us on what works in the digital space. So take it away, Andre, and educate all of us with all your wisdom. All right. You. Thank you very much. <laughs> Yeah, guys, so um, without further ado, so let's uh, get started. So uh, yeah, today's webinar is about growing online during a global pandemic, uh, even if everyone seems to be failing. We're going to cover a lot of topics uh, today. Um, we're going to try and fit everything within 30 minutes, and then there will be some time for Q&A. Uh, but just to cover uh, what we're going to be uh, talking about today, so first of all, real quick, we're doing it now. Uh, we're going to be doing an introduction, we, who we are, uh, and what you can expect from this webinar. Um, then the next step is we're going to be diving straight away into 15 UAE trends and niches that have 10x or more uh, during the pandemic. So we've done our research specific to the UAE, and we uh, compiled everything, and we're bringing it here today so you can see what's going on and what's working and what is not working as well. Then we're going to be looking at why this is a great opportunity to grow as well. So not everyone is losing here. We're going to be seeing that very, very clearly in our, um, in our trends. And you want to know how you can surf the current crisis and maybe turn it around into a great growing opportunity. Um, then um, what we're going to be talking about is knowing your performance. So in order to know if you are growing or if you are failing, you need to know exactly uh, where you stand. So we're going to be doing a really, really quick crash course um, on the metrics that you are probably going to want to look at during this crisis in order to help you navigate uh, throughout the time. And then finally, we're going to uh, be letting you know where to start. So how are you going to be able to take your first steps into taking advantage of this opportunity? So uh, we want to make this, uh, this, this webinar unique. So we have compiled the industries that, um, well, if you've registered um, in, the, in the last few days, we, um, we, we, we wanted to create, to compile some um, trends that relate to um, many, most of the industries that are here today. Uh, so we could make this uh, special to you and not just something generic. Um, so hopefully we're going to, uh, to show you something that is gonna be helpful to you. So um, I've, to introduce myself just a little bit, I already uh, got a great, a great introduction. Uh, thank you for that. But for the last 10 years, so I've been helping several multinationals, uh, whether it's in the US or Europe or the UAE markets with their digital marketing strategies, both, uh, if both pure online players um, or brick and mortar or omni-channel players. And currently helping um, startups and companies uh, pivot and succeed during this pandemic. The strategies we're going to be covering here, by the way, they can be applied whether you have a small budget or even no budget at all, depending on which traffic channels you're using, um, all the way to seven figure or even eight figure budgets if that's your case. So um, a little bit about Digitly. Um, so we are a performance intelligence and inbound agency. So we, uh, we are an online performance marketing agency that helps companies worldwide skyrocket their businesses online. The way we do this uh, is through intelligence. So first of all, we are the data nerds, the data geeks that uh, break down your data 
uh, and tell you what's working. Uh, so we leave you with the fun parts and we just uh, sit in the background, crunching the numbers, letting you know how your strategy is doing. And if we are working on part of your strategy, like running your uh, performance campaigns or media buying, then we are running them in the best way possible. So we're the best at it and we grow your business the same way. And then the next step is visualization. So not only we can give you the intelligence and give you the performance you're looking for, but we allow you to, to actually see and interact with the results uh, and with your analytics. So you can make the right questions. You can even find stuff that we missed. You can let us know how we are doing by uh, visualizing your results. And then finally, results. So that's what we care the most about. So we experiment a lot. We're going to, you're going to be actually seeing some of our frameworks today on this webinar. And the idea is we always want to work with someone that wants to get specific results. And we want to be measured by those results and be able to achieve those results. But enough of ourselves now, uh, let's dive, uh, let's dive uh, deep into the trends. We're going to be covering, uh, as I mentioned, um, some specific trends that we've selected according to the people that have been that are going to be attending this webinar. Uh, but we have a lot more trends that we have collected and those will be available to you at the end of the webinar as well. So if you have not seen here trends that are helpful to your business, uh, we are going to be sending you uh, a lot more um, than what we're, we can cover in the small uh, time that we have in this webinar. So let's start with the numbers that everyone knows. So this is the number of uh, COVID-19 cases in the UAE. Uh, we know that somewhere around here, uh, the real world has changed. Now, the question is, do you know uh, how much the digital world has changed as well? We know the real world changed because we're not able to go outside as much as we wanted. The businesses, the coffee shops, the restaurants that, were la that we loved, at some point we were not able to go there. So we know how things have changed in the real, the real world. But the digital world can be silent and that's what we want to fix today. We want to let you know how the digital world has changed um, as well. The way we're going to be doing this is we're going to be using uh, Google searches. So we, uh, the way we think changes the way we search. So you, when you have a question uh, in mind uh, and you, you want to find an answer for it, chances are you're going to grab your phone, Google it, and that's it. Now you know the answer. So Google has about 40,000 search queries per second. Um, the number just keeps growing uh, at a really, really, really fast pace. So whenever people have different questions in their mind and different needs, um, well, they will go to Google and Google will have that information ready for them. As an example, um, up until uh, COVID-19, if you were to type, and this depends on the country that you're in, your search history and all of that, but chances are if, you're doing it, if you do it uh, now, you're going to be able to see this. But if you type, are babies, the suggestion that you're going to get is, are babies born with teeth? So there's a lot of people that have this question. They're, uh, they're wondering about it and they just Google it and they find the answer. Now, if you do that search today though, you will notice that you get a slightly different suggestion there. So now you will get, are babies at risk of coronavirus? That would be the, 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 the first suggestion that you would get. Now, what we're going to be looking at is, let's look at how they changed per industry. Let's look at how they changed for specific search terms. And let's see if, they're, uh, if they have affected your business somehow. The first metric, the first, um, the first chart that I'm gonna bring you here, it's the only chart that's worldwide. And this is not our data, this one specifically. Uh, it shows you the impact on online traffic uh, of online traffic in selected industries. So this is a comparison between the period before COVID and the period during COVID-19. So you can see that uh, so some of the industries got a ton more search traffic, that's supermarkets, that's retail tech, telecom, and some of them have been heavily affected by, uh, by COVID-19. One of them would be tourism. We're going to be seeing that in the UAE, it 
correlates a lot with what we're seeing here as well. But it's good to look at specific numbers and that's what we're going to be doing now. Now about the data, uh, the data was uh, collected by us it is provided by Google. Google allows advertisers to know exactly how many people are searching for each search term, each search query at any given moment. The reason why they allow us to see into that is because we want to advertise on Google and we want to know how many people are searching for what we have to offer. So we use this, these tools that uh, Google provides us with uh, in order to identify trends that Google does not provide us with, but we are able to find them and dissect them, and that's what we've done here. These trends are UAE only, even though they probably correlate. Well, some of them do. We actually have that data as well uh, with trends worldwide. Some of them don't, but this one's about the UAE. I think they're, uh, they're more useful to you. If you want to get all the trends, by the way, you can go at uh, wearedigitally.com slash trends. You don't need to do it now. We're going to be sending them to you anyway. So for now, I would say um, just follow uh, the webinar and um, at the end, uh, you'll get, get another chance to get those uh, full trends. And even if you don't, you'll still get them on your email. You'll have the chance to get it later. So the market is changing. Uh, we know that, um, but that not everyone is losing. And that's what we're going to be uh, looking at today. So consumers are changing their behavior, absolutely. Um, the good thing about being data-driven is it allows you to know how much they are changing and it allows you to react and pivot and be confident that you are making the right decision. So here's an overview of uh, the restaurant industry. So if you're in the restaurant industry, I mean, the last few months have not been good to you, I I'm sure. Uh, and most of us uh, would know that from the real world. You wouldn't need to be on this webinar to know that um, the restaurants aren't doing that well. But looking at the data, you're able to see by how much they have been impacted online and when specifically did they start to be impacted on and if, whether they are recovering or not uh, at this moment. And that's important and that's something that you cannot measure just by being outside sometimes. You can also see that there are other trends that are growing and you would not have guessed probably. Uh, and this is what we're looking now. So if you are a restaurant, yes, the search uh, for restaurants online has declined uh, deeply. So uh, you can see on the, on the chart here on the left that the, the, the searches have dropped at around uh, the time that quarantine started. On the other hand, delivery has spiked. It, it's pretty crazy. Uh, delivery has went through the roof. So if you are a restaurant, uh, you should probably have considered um, delivery options. And if you haven't already, you should still do it. But you should also know that the spike has already happened. Now it's in decline. It doesn't mean that it's not going to be a good idea. Uh, it's probably still better than having than just operating uh, offline. But the big, big, sp big spike uh, has already happened. Now, if you look at other trends like recipes, that one seems to still hold uh, quite strong. So people are probably going to be going a lot less to restaurants, but uh, they will stay at home. They will want to cook. Maybe they are not that great at cooking. Uh, and that, if that's the case, uh, they might still keep uh, looking for um, recipes. So yeah, short term, you're a restaurant, consider full delivery apps, medium term, you wanna be top of mind uh, when restaurants are uh, back to business, which they are already um, getting back to business, then yeah, start sharing some content with your audience. Uh, this is a great time, they're looking for recipes, share, share some special recipe that you worked on the last week. Let them know that you have delivery at the same time. And this way you are able to reach your audience with something that they need. Now let's look at entertainment. So people um, were unable uh, or fearful of going to the cinema. They still are. Uh, and with a lot of time to kill, they, uh, they, they, they wanted to, to, uh, to watch movies. Uh, what they did was they, they, they're not searching for cinemas anymore, but instead they are searching for Netflix. Netflix grew a lot during this uh, pandemic. So you can see that while someone lost here, someone has also, um, and has also took advantage of this and, um, and, and, and turned out uh, strong the other way. 
So yeah, uh, if you're a cinema, if there's any chance that you can get into the streaming business, this is a good time for it. Uh, and again, it was even a better time during the quarantine, uh, but it's still holding quite strong, especially compared to, uh, to cinema searches. Entertainment again. Now let's look at, uh, at specific uh, platforms. So how did they do? Again, Netflix is crushing it uh, compared to uh, Stars Play, to Amazon Prime, OSN. So we can see that every platform grew a little bit, but the amount that uh, Netflix was able to grow when compared to the other ones, it's just insane. It's amazing. Good job to them. Um, now let's look at fitness. So yeah, with gyms closed or being unsafe uh, to some uh, people, consumers are moving into home-based solutions. So they started purchasing fitness equipment and subscribing to online gyms instead. So what we're looking at here is the, the, um, the queries for um, dumbbell and uh, the queries for gym. So we can see that people stopped searching for gyms uh, at around the time the quarantine started and suddenly the, the demand for uh, gym equipment like dumbbells just went through the roof. So people started to build their gyms inside of their house and they started subscribing as well to online gym memberships instead. So you're a gym, well, if you're able to, uh, to sell gym equipment, if you were able to do it or if you're able to do it now, it's good. Uh, do it online for sure. If you're able to start a streaming service uh, while you, where you stream your, um, your online classes, then do it because uh, people are taking advantage of that for sure. Now, if you're in electronics, uh, if you're in electronics, uh, you, you would have noticed if you sell these kinds of products, I'm sure you've seen an increase uh, in sales for them. Certainly a lot of people are now searching for them and they have been doing that since the quarantine with a major part of the workforce now being forced to work from home. Companies are looking for ways to make, make remote work more efficient. So demand for microphones, keyboards, laptops has, um, has risen since the quarantine. It's funny actually to see that uh, the microphones lagged by about a week or two. I guess people, maybe they got their laptops, they got their keyboards, and then they realized that their keyboard, their microphone isn't really that great, but it took them a week. By the way, hopefully my microphone is good enough. Yes. Um, but yeah, about two weeks later, they figured it out. Uh, I need to get a better mic. So yeah, if you're in electronics, uh, this is uh, a good time uh, to uh, promote those products. Now let's look at buying behavior in general. So if we look at trends for, uh, where it's like buy online, then you'll see that definitely has spiked a lot. So yeah, changing, it forces demographics that previously were not likely to purchase online, like the older demographics, into, um, into the market, into uh, having to figure this out quite fast because they are afraid of going outside. Uh, they are uh, in the risk group. It's not that safe to go outside. Uh, and also they had to be because they were quarantined. And so this trend might be here to stay as well. They now are able to buy online and uh, they're not as afraid anymore. Now let's look at those that spike a lot. So this shouldn't be like really uh, big news for us, but yeah, health related um, searches have spiked um, a lot. So a lot of the time they're also influenced by news media. Uh, it's funny if you look at uh, like something like Thorokine, for instance, when, um, when Trump mentioned, uh, first mentioned Thorokine and that he was using it and uh, that it would be a great solution, the interest for it just spiked massively. And then it just died out. And now it's almost going back to, uh, to normal. So yeah, uh, people are heavily influenced by media. They've been paying a lot of attention to, uh, to the media and they, 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 they search for the information that they, uh, that they see. Now, another one uh, for health related is sanitizer. Uh, so if you were selling sanitizer during the quarantine, you probably made a killing there. Uh, now the good thing um, is um, it, it spiked a lot, but it, it's also interesting to know that now it has, it has kind of, uh, went back not to normal, that's for sure, but to a new normal. So that uh, spike that we saw during the quarantine is not, um, is not um, something that uh, was sustained. 
Now, let's look at terms like PPE. So personal protective equipment, uh, yeah, that one for sure is here to stay. So um, if you are selling uh, personal protective equipment, chances are that you're going to be selling those uh, for a few months, maybe the next year, who knows, but the demand for it is still strong. It's still there. People are still searching for it. Now, if we look at travel, so um, looking at travel is, yeah, travel industry took a major hit. Uh, borders are closed. They are, people are afraid of, um, of, of, of catching the virus, getting into airplanes, getting into tourist hotspots. So it's not looking great um, if you are uh, in the tourist, in, in the travel industry. Uh, hotel searches have declined massively. But there is a glimpse of hope um, in the, at the end of the tunnel. Uh, we can see that the trend, that it's training up very, very slowly. So we will see uh, with the borders, when the borders start to open, um, maybe, um, maybe this will change. Now, I, I, we, we could stay here. Uh, we have a lot of trends that are still available in our ebook. I, I had to rush through these ones. But we have a lot available. If you go to wearedigitally.com forward slash trends, you will be able to download all the trends. And if you have any questions or if you have trends that you'd like to, us to look into, um, shoot us an email. You'll have our contact uh, details at the end of the webinar as well. We will be happy to look into it for you. Now, you, we've seen how things have changed. We've seen now that some industries are in decline, some products are in decline, but some products are growing like crazy. So let's look at why this is an opportunity. So first of all, consumers are changing. We've seen this today, we've learned this today, and if, even if we haven't, we have the feeling that something that's happening. When this happens, um, gaps in the market start to open when things uh, start to move, then gaps start to open. So companies that know the trends like you do now, and you'll know uh, a bunch more when you download the, the rest of them, they, they are able to step into those gaps that are opening. And if you know how you're performing and you're able to react fast, you will rise stronger. The second one is advertising is on sale. Advertising is cheaper right now. So consumers have never been online as much, which means that there is a lot of supply from advertisers because people are at home. They are spending a lot of time online, which means that advertising became cheaper because of it. The only, the other reason which even added further uh, is that advertisers that are not measuring their results uh, are usually pulling out. I know a lot of brands that uh, in the end uh, just decide, okay, so we're not going to, uh, we're gonna have to stop advertising. Uh, in, in a lot of cases, when, when we talk to those brands, what we understand is that they are not really sure about what kind of results they're getting. And in that scenario, I can understand that maybe it doesn't feel like the good, a good time to be, uh, to be advertising, but that might not be the case actually. It's never been that cheap to advertise online and a lot of brands are taking big, big, big advantage of this. And third of all, talent pool has increased. So of course, with the current pandemic, um, unfortunately, uh, some industries were, they, they had to lay off some people uh, and they had to lay off some great people. They're, they're super talented employees uh, right there. Uh, and um, they have been impacted by the crisis and um, they are looking for new opportunities. So if you want to step into those gaps right now, if um, you are able to pivot to experiment, then you, um, you, you join that together with how, how much advertising is cheaper. So you're able to advertise your experiments and see how they run. And you put that together with the talent that's now available to you it turns this into a great opportunity for you. Now, the third step is, and this is critical, because uh, if you are not able to see how you're doing, then I, it might not be great for you to, um, to try and pivot, because you need to be able to know if what you're doing is working or if it's not working. And what we're going to be doing right now is a very, very quick exercise that uh, you can do after the webinar for yourself. Uh, I, I think it's, this, is, this is critical for you to, 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 to have top of mind. And the important thing is always have a measurement 
plan. So if you are familiar with uh, how the marketing funnel typically works, then you're gonna be familiar with, uh, with some of these uh, concepts, um, top of the funnel, middle of the funnel, and bottom of the funnel. If you're not familiar with it, I'm just going to summarize it real quick in 30 seconds. Um, so very, very quickly, when someone becomes, um, becomes your customer, chances are they went through different stages. First of all, they realize that they have a problem. So uh, let's see, uh, maybe they, uh, they wanted to find, um, and uh, they, 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 they realized that they needed a, web a website. They were in the middle of a COVID situation. They realized they needed a website. They start researching the problem then. Uh, so how can I make a website? Uh, things like that. And um, then when they are researching it, what you're looking for is you want to step into that conversation. You want to be the ones that they find. So if you're offering IT solutions, then let them know how they can start a website. Uh, it's okay to do it. Chances are they're not going to want to do it themselves, but they want to know that you know what you're talking about. And then for, finally, once they decide that that's not something that they want to do, but actually you help them along the way you're going to be the first one that they're going to be considering. And hopefully in the end, you're able to make your sale. Now, to divide your metrics, you should first start by defining your core metrics. So what is it that's important to you? You need to understand uh, what exactly changes your bottom line in your business. So divide them into funnel stages if you can. We really recommend that, uh, but at the end, uh, it's up to you but um, divide them into top of the funnel. So let's say you want awareness. Let's say this is what you're looking for right now, or you want authority. You wanna be authoritative in your field. That's cool. Uh, write them down uh, and, uh, and that's your top of the funnel metric. Middle of the funnel, uh, let's say uh, you want more newsletter signups or trial subscriptions. That is cool as well. That's great, write them down. Uh, that's your middle of the funnel metric, bottom of the funnel. So that's when people uh, buy from you. Let's say you want more purchases. I think uh, that, would, that one would be common to all of us. Uh, paid subscribers, that, uh, that also uh, might relate to some of you if you're doing uh, subscription businesses. Second, specify how you will measure them. It's not only important to know your metrics, but how are you measuring? Like, how are you gonna measure awareness? It's, it's like, how, you, how do you put a number to it? You have to put a number to it all the time because otherwise you will not know if you're succeeding. So let's say it might be um, number of articles read. Maybe you have a website and you are promoting content. Uh, if that is the case, then uh, number of articles read in a month would be a good metric for you. Number of articles per user. So when you wanna know if your content is good and if your content is authoritative, then well, chances are that if your content is good, people will actually uh, read more than one of your articles. So read two, three, four. So have that metric um, in hand. Try to improve it. If you are improving it, you're doing a good job. Middle of the funnel. So you said you want a newsletter uh, signups and trial subscriptions. You know what? Chances are sometimes you're going to pick a core metric that it's just actually your uh, way to measure it. So uh, yeah, keep an eye on how many newsletter signups you're getting. Keep an eye on how many trial subscriptions you're getting. That's a great metric to have. Keep it bottom of the funnel. So you want purchases, track your uh, value total and also track uh, how much of your total is coming out of each channel. So are you investing in Facebook ads? You should know exactly how many people have read your articles from Facebook ads. You should know how many people are uh, signing up to your newsletter out of your Facebook ads exclusively and how much of your revenue is actually impacted by your Facebook ads because you don't want to, you know, uh, you don't want to pause your Facebook ads just to learn a week later that you suddenly lost a ton of money and you don't know why. And the reason is because they were actually driving your sales. So yeah, have those uh, specific measurements set um, just so you can keep a, a, an eye on them. And then set clear success thresholds and set them ahead of time. I know it's, it's tempting sometimes to just say, hey, I want as many signups as possible. I, I'm on, I want as many sales as possible. Uh, and, and that's common. I mean, all of us want that. But set a number to it. Put a number to it just so you know how far or how close you are to getting to that objective. Let's say it's 500,000 article rates per month. 
That's great. So that's your goal. Let's say 30,000 new subscribers per month is something that's attainable to you if you work hard on it. So let's do it. Let's have 30,000 per month. And let's say your monthly recurring revenue is 40,000 a month. That's also great, but set it ahead of time. You're going to feel tempted to change them uh, once you're getting close to the deadline. Do not do that. So the next step is visualizing your success. So, all right, so it's cool. You have your core metrics. You know how to measure them. You have success thresholds. But now you got to be able to look at them every day. You want to um, at least every week be looking at them and see how it's working. If something that you're doing is not working, you should change straight away. If something you're doing is working, you should invest more in it. So have a way to visualize your success. Have the metrics on top of you. If you have a way to have a dashboard, then have it there just so you can see how close you are to success. The reason why you want to do this is with the times that we're living right now, you can see how some of the trends that we've looked at, they spiked for a week or two and then they went back to normal. Some of them, they just crashed uh, straight away um, in, in, in a matter of a week. Some of them just grew straight away in a matter of weeks. So by knowing these trends first and knowing how they are doing, you're able to drive some hypothesis to your business. You can, you can just sit and say, hey, I wonder what would happen if I tried this, knowing that the trends are here. After you have this, set up a controlled experiment. So let's say what you're thinking is, I think that my market does not have the money right now to afford my prices. So my hypothesis is maybe I should try lower my rates. I would certainly not consider, I, I would not uh, recommend you to run that kind of test straight away, but maybe that's something that you, you want to run. You want to see that if you, if you decrease your prices, you're able to get more volume and make more money that way. It might be true. So if that's the case, run a controlled experiment. What you can do online is to segment half of the people that visit your website, your offer, your product, show them the, the more expensive option. And then for half of them, you're going to be showing them the cheaper option. You keep them separately. So it's kind of like you're doing a science experiment. And at the end of the day, what happens is you let it run for let's say two weeks or a month. Well, how, well, how much time you, however much time you need to draw a conclusion. And then at the end, you're going to be measuring them. You're going to be looking at them separately and you're going to be seeing, okay, so um, for uh, my higher price tag, at the end of the day, this is how much money I made. And for the lower price tag, at the end of the day, this is how much money I made. Whichever one is the one that made me the most money is the one that you want to move ahead with and you want to scale to the rest of your business. Now, Sometimes people are scared about doing this uh, because they don't want to mess around with their business too much. And it's good to know as well that like, you don't need to apply this to half of your traffic, half of your visitors. You can run, especially if you have very high levels of traffic, you can run a lot of different um, experiments at the same time. So you grab a few thousand people here and you run an experiment just on them. And if it works, then you scale it to a few thousand more and you start scaling them gradually. You don't have to make a big decision there. And then you apply these improvements to your funnel. So by experimenting, uh, even if things change, it's cool if you're able to react, experiment quite fast, know how you're doing and you will eventually find um, a winner, I'm sure. And finally, um, we want to know where to start now. So you're now able to create your measurement plan. After, uh, hopefully after this webinar, you'll be able to, uh, to get those metrics ready and you'll know next month what you're aiming for. Now, the next thing you need is you need to be able to visualize your business. So visualizing is extremely important. You wanna track how close to your goals you are just so you know how and when to pivot. What I'm gonna show you here are just examples of the technology that we use and we provide, but you do not need to use these. Like you, you, if you wanna use a spreadsheet, that's great. I know a lot of companies that use spreadsheets and they are okay with it. So you can just replicate what we have here into a spreadsheet if you want. I think it's important for your, in your data to make it fun. So ideally you wanna make your data beautiful and interactive. That's because chances are 
you're not working alone, you're working in a team and you need to com communicate your results to other departments. And if you send them a spreadsheet uh, and you've not put a lot of work into it, chances are they're not going to be looking at it every day. So make it fun um, whenever you can. Make it simple as well. Everyone in your team wants to understand their impact. Not everyone is a marketing specialist. Um, not everyone knows your business as well as, uh, as you do. So what we want, you want to do is you want to break down what the issue is and how to fix it and what the impact to the business is. In our case, we show notifications. So let's say uh, if, um, if, if people are abandoning the checkouts um, uh, midway, then um, you want to point out that uh, people are adding to cards uh, at the much less frequency than they were before. And uh, you're losing 20, 22K um, with this issue. So look at it. Um, and you want to know also uh, in total how much potentially you can unlock as well. So if you can communicate that to your team, it can be motivational. You can tell them, hey guys, look, this is the problem that we're having. This is how much it's costing us. And if we're able to fix it, this is how much we're going to be making. Then we want to make it actionable as well. Knowing there's a problem is great, but if you don't know how to fix it or if you have no idea where to start fixing them, then it's just stressful. You don't want more stress in your life. So you actually want a solution. And uh, it's important for you to make sure that uh, your data paves the way uh, to a solution. And then finally, you also want to see trends. So uh, trends change fast. You've seen a lot of them here today but it's important to keep on top of them. Uh, this is the data that we have as of, uh, I think last week or two weeks ago, but today those changes might be totally different. I, I don't know, maybe what you've seen today are, is, is not true anymore. So it's important for you to be able to actually look at them every day, every week. I would say every day is actually a little bit uh, obsessive, uh, but every week it should, be, uh, it should be there. You should be looking at it maybe on Monday when you start your day, maybe Friday when you end your, maybe um, uh, during the week, uh, up to you. But uh, definitely look at those. Make it explorable as well. So again, uh, if you wanna do it on, um, on, uh, on a spreadsheet, uh, have a way to interact there with your data as well. Like at least have some filters, like be able to filter by mobile traffic, by desktop. Um, be able to, to, to filter by countries be able to, to break it down a little bit because sometimes you might have a problem with mobile traffic only, for instance, and you might be freaking out thinking that your business is going down and actually you, you just have a broken image in your website on mobile. So be able to um, interact with, um, with your data. Now, it's also important to have someone that looks at, in your team that looks at the, um, the data um, frequently. So it's important to make this data personal as well. So someone needs to be on top of your success. Someone needs to be looking at your last week and tell you, hey, look, this thing that you did on Reddit, it actually worked really, really well. So don't forget about it. Don't move on to something else. Actually, you should focus on this over the next couple of weeks. Try to make it better. If you can have someone in your team that at least once a week is going to be looking at that and letting you know how you're doing, you should absolutely uh, get that done. In our case, we have people that are completely data nerds and they are looking into your data and they are breaking it down and they're remembering you that uh, there's some things that you got to focus on, some things that you should try and it, they allow you to like your personal coach, they allow you to, uh, to keep on track uh, to success. And finally, whichever dashboard that you use, there are a lot of solutions. You can create your own dashboard on spreadsheets. You can, uh, you can use Google Analytics, for instance. Chances are a lot of you guys are using Google Analytics right now. Um, if you, um, if you, whichever dashboard that you use, it's important to make it yours. So if you are in the IT business, if you're in the restaurant business, if you're in the travel industry, uh, if you're in the media industry, it, the chances are that you have specific needs. Um, the, the dashboards that you get in Google Analytics, they're good if you are technical enough and you have the time to dive deep into each single metric that you find in there. 
But if you just want to see your, how your business are performing, the metrics that, are, that matter to you only, and you want to see them straight away, then make it yours. So what we do in our case is we work with companies to help them define their core metrics, how to measure them, how they want to see them, uh, how, uh, how they want it to look and all of that. We make it uh, specially for you, just so you can open up your app or your desktop or whatever and you get on top of your business and know how it's working and you move, you move on to the next thing. Now that you are visualizing, now the next step is experiment and grow. Uh, if anything that you can take away from this webinar is the importance of experimenting when things are changing so fast. Don't stick with the old methods. Uh, instead, start experimenting, starting doing new things. A lot of them will fail, that's for sure. But when you find that winner, you're going to be able to pivot your business. You're going to be able to grow where others are not growing. You have a few solutions available to you right now that are pretty much on sale and that's advertising on Facebook. You're able to, if you want to reach a hundred people tomorrow, you can do it. If you want to reach a million people tomorrow, you can also do it. If you want to run experiments in those, in that 1 million uh, people that you, uh, that you want to acquire, that's the, right now it's the cheapest time to run those experiments with them. Uh, it's very, very cheap right now to, um, to start driving some extra traffic to your website and it's the best time to do it because you want to experiment as fast as possible. Google Ads, uh, surf the trends. So uh, if your campaign has been stale for the last, last three months, chances are your current structure, your current keywords, your uh, current targeting is probably not the best right now. You've seen that um, trends have changed so much and if you were not able to update your account, if you're not able to update your keywords and all your strategies, chances are you gotta do it now. So uh, when you exit this webinar, take a look at your Google Ads account as well, see how it has been performing over the last three, four months. If something is not working, then try to make it work. So do some changes there. Look at the trends, get our ebook. Maybe you will get some, uh, something out of it. It's free by the way. Uh, and, uh, yeah, this, uh, this is, um, this is, uh, I think that the take, the, the biggest takeaway from here is how fast things change, how you can experiment and, uh, why this could be an opportunity. So hopefully this has been helpful to you. Uh, if you want to talk a little bit more about this, um, you're here in the webinar. We're not able to, uh, to chat uh, as well as we wanted to, but uh, here are our contact details. Uh, you're, uh, you're able to send us an email, any questions you have, any trends you would like to have. If you want to have a free 13-year strategy call, we're doing that right now. So uh, yeah, definitely get in touch with us. And uh, now it's time for uh, Q&A. Right. Thank you, Andre. Uh, very insightful. Learned a lot. I'll give you uh, some time to catch your breath and get some water. Uh, till then, uh, let me just share my experience in the web business for the last 24 years. And I want to leave uh, the participants with a few tips. The first thing that I would emphasize is uh, just check how quickly your website uh, downloads on a mobile. Okay. It should happen in less than five seconds. And if that's not happening, you are losing more than 50% of your audience. This is not me saying that, this is statistics published. And I find a lot of companies, large ones especially, they want fancy sites, they want bells and whistles, they want cool looking sites. Look at Google. I think it's the worst looking website on the planet. It has nothing, there's no design, nothing. But what's great is that it downloads in two seconds or less. So th there's a message there. Do check and make sure that your website is optimized for all platforms, all mobiles, all kinds of different uh, operating systems. And it's a good time to invest in that for starters. The next uh, tip I would like to give you is uh, getting organic rankings in Google is key. You could spend a ton doing Google AdWords. The moment you stop or slow down, your traffic slows down. It's not rocket science. The only long-term strategy is to rank high in organic rankings. So start by investing in that. 
And uh, trust me, it's quite complicated. If all of us could uh, do it, then all web companies would be out of business. So focus on your core business and trust the professionals to help you with that part. And uh, Andre, have you caught up with your breath? I have, yeah. Because I have about seven questions that were sent in by participants through the registration okay. form. And okay. before I shoot that, uh, before I start asking you those questions, let me just narrate a true story. This actually happened something like four or five weeks back with me. When the gyms closed, my 25 year old boy wanted to get a treadmill for home use. So I went on the internet, started calling up people. I think I called five companies. Not one of them had a treadmill available for home use. They were totally sold out, totally. They had professional gym treadmills, which costed more than north of $1,500. Finally, I found one treadmill on Amazon, not amazon.a, but amazon.com, which came to me from an Indian company, which manufactured in China and found one lying in their London warehouse. This is the power of the internet. So I finally did manage to get my treadmill but every single treadmill for home use was sold out in Dubai five weeks back. So even during COVID, some business were purely thriving. All right, they, they were in a stock out situation. So it really depends on what you're doing, how you market yourself, how you position yourself, and more importantly, how quickly you pivot, how quickly you adapt to the new realities. Exactly. Okay, it's a new marketplace. Everything has changed on its head, 360 degrees. Old rules do not apply anymore. Traditional marketing does not work. And in the words of that customer who called me, he wanted digital. So all of us, I think today have to agree that every action we take from here on in our business has to be digital centric and has to be ROI driven. Set your targets and everything has a ROI. Even social media, there is an ROI. If you are investing in Facebook, in Instagram, in Twitter, or whatever, set your own benchmarks. And if you are not achieving the ROI, then you are probably not doing it right. You need to get professional help. And uh, guys like Andre, guys like uh, Nicholas can surely help you with that. And I also know a little bit uh, about digital, so I'm always available. Uh, okay, Andre, let's uh, start with a few questions I received. Absolutely. And right. uh, just to comment on the, yeah. on on something you said, which is really important, actually. Um, yeah. Sometimes, and we, we we actually come across a, a that point um, a few times. Um, sometimes, some companies get a, a tremendous boost just by uh, making their website faster. Sometimes they come to us; they have a problem with their online campaigns, and when we look at it, we actually notice that um, a big, big percent. Sometimes up to fifty percent. That's something that we were uh, looking at just uh, last week. Um, sometimes up to 50% of their traffic, they are clicking their ads, they're paying for it, and then they're not landing on their website. So you're just throwing that money away. And uh, actually you can fix your campaigns by fixing your website. So that's a, a great Absolutely. point. Yeah. Thanks for bringing All that. right. So uh, the first question uh, that I've got is from a news media company. It's actually a newspaper, local newspaper. And mm -hmm. uh, they are seeing a decline in their subscriptions, the hard copy print editions. So they right. are uh, totally like thinking of going online. And their question is very specific. They want to know if a subscription model paid for, like New York Times, would work in our marketplace in the Middle East. What is your opinion on that? Right. Absolutely. So I assume it's a digital subscription. So yes, uh, I, uh, so I cannot tell you if it works because there's pricing, there's, um, there's your uh, audience uh, involved in it. But I could tell you that a lot of digital subscriptions are growing like crazy right now. So what I would say, um, just like on this webinar, is definitely experiment with it. Get a section of your audience and uh, run a few experiments there. Do try it uh, because yeah, for sure, that could change your business. All right, the next question is coming in from an SME uh, who has limited advertising budget and wants to know what he should be doing. Should he go Google AdWords? Should he go social media? What is your recommendation? 
Right. So it depends on how limited the budget is. So um, if we are, uh, if we're talking about, um, if we're talking about uh, six figures being limited, or if we're talking about seven figures being limited, depends. Uh, but if it's really, really, really limited, like really small, I would say uh, first depends on your niche. If it's B2B, then you might want some channels. If it's not, you might want other ones. But without more information, I would say try Google Ads first. And also do not spread your budget too thin. So try one um, channel, and then if it doesn't work, try another one. Don't try to do everything at the same time. All right, I have another question from somebody who wants to know. Uh, he is advertising on all kinds of digital media and he is having to look at different dashboards to monitor his performance. Is there a solution where he can look at one single dashboard and uh, make quick decisions or automate his decisions of how much to spend on which keyword, etc. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I totally feel uh, your pain there. Um, and actually, that's why we have developed a solution uh, to, um, to, um, to group all of the different channels. So if you have Google ads, if you have Facebook ads, if you have Twitter, if you want to see social, if you want to see how your e-commerce is performing, we group them together in the same dashboard in a way that makes sense to you. So this is a solution that we offer currently. Uh, and send us a message. We would love to talk to you. We'd love to show you how it works. Um, another way you could do this is uh, maybe there are some tools that uh, might be able to get close to what you're looking for, but it's not custom. And uh, I think a custom solution makes a lot of times um, uh, the most sense to you. But I can right. feel your pain. Yeah, this is an e-commerce store that wants to know the efficiency of using chatbots. Right, right, interesting. Okay, so um, I don't know which chatbot tool you're using. Um, well, my experience with chatbot, chatbots has been mixed. Um, some companies are able to make great chatbots and um, they are able to have very good success with it. Some companies don't make, don't invest that much in the chatbot itself and they end up um, annoying their consumers uh, more than what they're helping them. Uh, sometimes I've seen companies where they just trap their consumers uh, in their chatbot. Um, so experiment with it. What I would say is try it out. Some companies are seeing a lot of success with it. Yes. All right, great. So that uh, pretty much wraps up uh, today's uh, session. And what I want to leave you with is the fact that we've recorded uh, this webinar and we'll be sending you a link very soon. So you can uh, refer to it, you can share it with your colleagues, with your friends. Uh, second thing is we'll be providing you a link to the ebook that Andre has prepared, which has a lot of trends for different industries. Uh, so we love you to look at that in your own time. And this is the first of a series of webinars that we'll be doing on this topic. Uh, we'll probably schedule another one in about uh, four to five weeks from now. And I'd love to hear from you. What are your pain points? What are the topics of interest for you? What it is that you'd like us to cover in the next one? And we'll be happy to continue this dialogue. So thank you for your time and attention. Uh, stay safe and be good. Goodbye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you very much. And thank you, participants, once again. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. Goodbye.